Galnet News Digest, 7th of June, 3308. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, there are concerns over an ancient planetary outpost. The Golconda generation set sail in their new fleet carriers. And Commander Alec Turner nearly completes his fifth planetary circumnavigation. Antiquarian and explorer Commander Imenex has discovered what appears to be the site of an ancient agricultural outpost similar to those found in Hawkins Gap with ancient greenhouses. Although the site, which is on HIP 86908, Planet 3A, was not catalogued until this week, it appears that after it was abandoned, it was previously visited by a group calling themselves Exploration Team Alpha. This group of visitors have left brief records of what they found, that explain why the site passed once again into obscurity. It does not appear that Exploration Team Alpha survived. Exploration Team Alpha Situation Report. Command, it looks like initial fears were justified. I knew it was too good to be true that there was a settlement all the way out here. Quarantine measures were all in place when we arrived, but there are no survivors. It looks like the place was a pioneer deep space colony, must have been here for centuries. According to the logs, some kind of unknown contaminant was released into the O2 system. They were all exposed in a matter of minutes. We found what's left of the bodies. The quarantine systems kept them pretty juicy. Looks like they dissolved from the inside. Not a good way to go. According to the doctor, there's no chance the contaminant can still be active. Team Alpha Medical Officers report. The bodies here are in an amazing state of preservation considering how long they've been out here. The quarantine system seems to have kept them fresh, for want of a better term. Initial analysis of the subject UC-001 has shown an interesting level of activity in the remaining tissue. It seems that the contaminant works at a very slow rate once the host is deceased, enabling it to last long past the death of... Ah, no, I need to double-check this data. That can't be correct. Exploration Team Alpha Emergency Broadcast. Mission Code Red. I repeat, Mission Code Red. The site is still contaminated. It's an organism. The contaminant. It's killed Miller, Jackson, Lee, Bailey, and I've been exposed also. Don't know how long I've got. Reinitializing quarantine measures to seal the settlement. Do not send rescue. Classify as no-go. Repeat, no-go. In the light of this disturbing historical information, canon scientists are working to identify whether Commander Imenex might need to be quarantined. A new generation of fleet carriers has set sail this week, funded by those most generous Golcondans, who have been stocking their newly upgraded generation ship with tritium, so they are ready to resume their nomadic lifestyle. With the 79,640,000 tonnes of tritium that has been delivered, the Golconda now has a theoretical range of 359 million light-years, which would allow the ship to jump to the Andromeda Galaxy and back 71 times. However, the additional mass of all that tritium means that the generation ship may well be using tens of thousands of tonnes of tritium for its first few jumps. It's really not a good idea to carry too much tritium on a megaship, unless you can persuade your friends to store it in their Type 9s in the hangar, in which case the tritium has no mass at all. All those new fleet carriers, the Generation Ship Golconda Generation of Fleet Carriers, also experienced problems, with the number of scheduled fleet carrier jumps causing time to slow down for a few hours after the conclusion of the appeal. Some fleet carrier jumps could only be scheduled for an hour or more after they were requested. But everything seems to be back to normal now. There are rumours that there are now one or two commanders who have more money even than Zachary Rackham, the billionaire who recently achieved his first 
trillion credits. But of course, these are only rumors. Alec Turner's circumnavigation of Col 359 sector BE Q C6 O 7B in a Scarab SRV is more or less complete. Commander Turner has a penchant for taking the longest route to get to where he already is, and has previously circumnavigated four other planets, while everyone else much more sensibly just stayed where they were in the first place. Choosing the right planet is important. This tiny rock, with 0.04 of Earth's gravity, has a radius of only 375 kilometres, so if the circumference is pi times the diameter, that's only 2,356.2 kilometres for Commander Turner to drive. Only he doesn't drive, he flies, which means bouncing along with the aid of his thrusters, or falling with style. He can indeed leap tall mountains with a single bound, and it is far more likely to be Commander Turner than a bird or a plane, at least on Col 359 Sector BE-QC6-O7B. One slight problem with this planet is that its days are about five and a half Earth days long, so even with Commander Turner flying towards the sunrise and away from the sunset, for him the night lasts about two and a half days. In order to arrive at the finish line in daylight, he's been camped out 200 kilometres short of the finish for two Earth days now. Of course, just like Phileas Fogg, Commander Turner will have experienced one fewer local days than someone who stayed the whole time at the finish line. So, if he has experienced one night, then even with his layover, he will have taken no days at all to circumnavigate the curious world of Col 359 Sector B-Q C6-O7B. Commander Turner has not yet attempted any circumnavigations of any planets using the alternative Scorpion SRV, and he has refused to even consider the idea of circumnavigating a planet on foot, no matter how much everyone has urged him to take a long walk. Even for Commander Turner, there are limits. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News, we calculate the circumference of a planet. So you don't have to. (laughs) 